Why is the game of cornhole so popular? That's what I don't understand. But yet, over the course of the past three years, we sold over 25 sets of cornhole boards. I'm Steve, and this is Patio Benders. And on today's episode, we're building a new board with a new design, and I'm super stoked about this project. Now, this board will be a little different in that they call it a practice board. Like seriously, who needs a practice board? I can't even land the bags on a normal board. Nevertheless, on a practice board, which is only 14 inches wide at the top, around 10 inches wide at the bottom. I mean, apparently, there are two kinds of people that need this board. The first type, you know the kind. They're the guys that are rocking every bag in the hole while yours are laying on the grass. And then the second type are people like me who totally suck at cornhole, but yet love the game. Man, I wish I could be better at cornhole. <laughs> so our new design board looks a lot different than the old design. The old design board was 2x4 construction with plywood tops that I bought at the big box store and I'm through with that lumber. Our new design board are going to be built out of 1x3 pine with Baltic Burt's tops. Not only are they going to look amazing, but they're going to be practical. You're going to be able to clap them together and carry them with rope handles. Now, today, the first thing we need to do is trim down our 1x6s and make them 1x3s. We need to put some pocket holes in them and then sand them down and get them ready for assembly. So now that we're done with our 1x3s, we've cut them, we've sanded them, we put some pocket holes in them. Now we're ready to focus on these beautiful tops that are going to be prepared and made for our practice cornhole boards. Now, what am I looking at here? This is a beautiful sheet of Baltic birch. It's 3 quarter inch thick, it's 5 feet long, and I have this sheet which is 44 inch inches wide. So we're going to make our first cut at four feet and get rid of this part because we've got some some scratches and dents so we're going to get rid of that. Then we're going to make a few angle cuts. So our measurements for the top of this board are 14 and a half and the bottom is 10 and a half. So I got some measuring to do and then we're going to light up this saw and let her rip. What am I waiting for? These things aren't going to rip themselves. So I'm going to stop talking and let the saw do the walking.
When we pop holes into our cornhole boards, we just use this simple jig, which has already got the hole in it. It's got a center point. It's got the distance to the hole. And I just line it up, put a couple clamps on it, turn it around, drill a hole in it, and then take my router and just round it. It's got a bearing on it, a flush bit, and it just travels around the circle. That's how we pop the holes in our cornhole boards. So now that we've cut these, we've poked some holes in them, and I gotta say, they look great. Now we're ready to use round over bit. Now, I'm gonna round all edges front and back, but we'll wait to round off the back till I make my measurements so that we have a half inch lip on the side and top and bottom. You're going to notice I have frog tape on the edges. Now we're using Minwax stain here. Always use gel stain. And as you can see, like, it's just it's beautiful. Just beautiful. So now I'm going to pull this up. Actually, we'll do that after. Let's do the sides first. I like to do sides first. That way then I'm not afraid of mucking up this area here. And we'll start on the sides. I love it. Alright, so we'll show you this edge here. This is kind of the edge that's facing you. Okay, so we want it to get the top one color and then do all natural for the sides. Right? So here's my taping job. And as you can see here, see if the camera. We did a beautiful job. Alright. Gonna lay this down. Pull this up. Yeah, that's good. Always please after pulling the tape off with the finish, the stain leaves. Like it's just Beautiful. Nothing more to say about it. Just beautiful. I really like it. So I'm I'm pinstriping here and again I I totally forgot about my camera. It's it's terrible. Anywho, we're pinstriping this board now that it's stained. And we're using frog tape, painters tape. The key to getting a good pinstripe on wood is use urethane, a spray bomb. And the night before we sprayed it, after I was done staining, I kind of cheated there. Left it an hour, came back and sprayed it. And I can tell, you won't be able to tell, and the customer won't be able to tell, but even with the urethane, there's some a wee little bleeding here. I think next time I'll let it dry, then spray another coat, let that dry, then sand it in the morning. Nevertheless, we're gonna pull up this tape here so you guys can get a good idea of what this looks like. Again, it just accents the board. It gives it a little bit of a, a touch. I'm gonna do the center part as well, I think. I'll take a better look at it once we're done here. Of course, you get to this point, you don't want to mess it up, right? Because it'd be a shame to place this in the burn pile. <laughs> but yeah, looks good. Turned out all right. So now that we got that done, we can work on the center and do the very same thing we did on the outside, on the center.
And I know I said it before, but I'll say it again. I absolutely love frog tape. And as you've seen today, it doesn't even compare performance wise to the painter's tape, just your regular painters. Even the painter's pro tape bleeds. Not like frog tape. Frog tape, I don't know what it is. And again, I said it before, the other thing I like about it, is you can see through it. You can see your artwork. So if you need to lay another piece across, you know where to lay it because you can see right through the tape. Now, again, I left paper here because we just painted this inside strip and I didn't want the tape to pull it up. That's why we have paper in here. And yeah, we're here, guys. We just gotta pull this up again. I've just put a, a nice small pinstripe. This one's 1 16th thick. And again, I'm working with Baltic Birch, which really works well too. It absorbs, it doesn't absorb the paint like your soft wood, like your soft birch, like your birch plywood you get at the big box store. It's a level up. You really do level up with Baltic Birch when it comes to your artwork. It just seems to take the paint nicer and it doesn't mess up, it doesn't bleed like your regular plywood at the big box store. Not that I don't use the big box store plywood. I've made many, plenty of cornhole boards with it. But I really do like this Baltic birch. I really like it. And there we go, guys. That's what it looks like when it's done. And again, you're gonna notice nice crisp lines. You can see that, eh? Really nice. So now that that's all done, we're just going to let this dry for about an hour and then we'll come back and we'll start laying four coats of flooring urethane, which is water-based. So yeah, we'll just lay this over here with the other board, take the legs off it, and then... In about an hour, they'll be ready for urethane. So after three coats of the flooring urethane with the semi-gloss, these are ready for their final sanding and their final coat to give it that smooth finish. Then after putting the rope and legs, these boards will be rocking and ready for those bags to be sliding in the hole while mine are landing on the grass. Again, these are our Pratsis boards and they're looking fantastic. So, got the old ball cap on. So I wanna get the new one dusty and we're ready to lay the orbiter sander on here and give this a final sanding. So now that we're all finished sanding our last coat, we're ready to use our urethane. I always tell my boys I'm going out to urinate on the cornhole board. <laughs> but seriously, urethane, nano, defense. Semi-gloss, that's the French side, so that's for all you folks in Quebec. On this side, it's all English, and apparently it's got a really tough finish. Very durable, very pliable, and it looks like glass when you're done with it. All right, guys, so there's our old-style board, 2 by 4 construction. You see that there? Now these ones aren't finished, so they're, they need a clear coat, but gives you an idea what they look like. And here is the new design cornhole board. Okay, inlay tops, Baltic birch, beautiful design on the front, handles. What I really like about these is you can clap them together, right? Let's see, let's turn it around. 
basically they just kind of slide into each other. There you are. Nice, right? All right, now let's show you what they look like set up. But first, let's get around to the side here. You can see here inlaid one by three marine rope, black in color. Okay, let's quickly take a look here. We've had found a way to eliminate all rocking. So you set this on the ground. There's no rocking. The only rocking that's happening is you sliding those bags in the hole. Okay, that's the best part. So, let me pause this. I'll set one up and then we'll take a quick shot of it. Okay. Okay, one last look before I sign off. I have to say, they turned out really nice. Really, really nice. I'm really happy with these. And of course, on a practice cornhole board set for my buddy, allowed me to use this new design, like to build it and learn from it. So when we put it towards our regular board set, I'll, I'll be able, I feel more comfortable building the larger set without making mistakes, right? That's what it's all about. Like this first set, we had a few errors that I made, but fortunately, those errors worked for me and not against me. So, yeah, I just called my buddy and uh, he's excited. He can't wait to pick them up. I can't wait to see him use them. I can't wait to throw bags on these in the summertime. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so. All right, so another great build, another great day here in the neighborhood from Patio Benders, fine builds and woodworking. Wish you guys all the best. And if you have any questions, hit us up. Take care, and we'll catch you again.